security solutions provider Axido. Axido helps the world's lead grow engaging video experiences. The company provides a combination of product strategy and concept optimization. Wow, with such credentials, we are honored to have them for enabling us to bring some technology and thought leaders together for this VRT or virtual round table. Throughout this VRT, we'll be speaking about how important is the user experience and interface in the success of an OTT service. Then on. Finally, we will understand how building a streaming service with the right flexible architecture, scalable one, right from the get-go is crucial to save a lot of hard burn later when we, do, when we want to integrate upgrades to solutions for the services that vendors have given us, or if you want to integrate new solutions or services. A month or more ago, IndianTelevision.com conducted a study amongst leading Indian OTT service providers to understand the attitudes and hunger amongst Indian OTTs to keep on constantly moving the needle on their products to improve the consumer experience, experience to innovate, and to also invest in technology. That survey helped us to call out concerns that OTT tech leaders have, their priority topics for today, as well as the discussion points for today's VRT. I would like to thank a few of the survey participants who have agreed to come on, guys, for participating in that survey. The idea of this virtual roundtable is to help industry ruminate our distinguished panelists today can, uh, consist of. Uh, they're really great experts uh, from, from different parts of the world. First, from the industry, we have Alok Majumdar, the technology head of the East India-based OTT platform, Hoichoy, which just celebrated its anniversary with a fantastic gathering. It was a virtual gathering with a lot of talent and actors from the uh, east of India. Uh, and they've just launched a launch of many more and scores of originals. Welcome, Alok. How are you this morning? Alok, are you there? How are you, madam? Yeah, yeah. I'm good. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Thank I'm you. full of energy. I hope you guys are too. I hope, I hope yeah. to pass some of that energy on to you guys, to uh, sure. energize sure. you guys. Sure. Then we yeah. have, great. Then we have Dev Datta, the CCO of the Chief Curies, Relating to alternative sexuality, namely LGBT, the mission is to germinate an acceptance for all societal communities by eliminating any kinds of biases based on gender stereotypes and sexual orientations. And its vision is to see the change happening, the change of preventing discrimination and prejudice against the hormonally challenged societal communities, their brotherhood. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. Dave, welcome. My pleasure to have you here. From Murray, we have Rohit Bapert, the GM technology of a com company found executives from who were, who were at one time with Network 18 and Viacom 18, uh, Sai Kumar and Ajay Chako. And they, they launched this uh, service that they have very early on to provide entertaining content to younger, younger audiences, as well as to distribute the content that they create on their own platform and on premium OTD platforms globally. Uh, welcome, Rohit. Thank you, Anil. My pleasure to have Heartlands and to those with an interest in massy local stories. It is one of the most successful subscription services in the country. And of course, uh, behind it is uh, one of the most recognized in Kong, Ekta Kapoor. Welcome, Shabadun. My pleasure to have you. Uh, then we have Swamik Solanki, the head of product of SSK Osmosis, the company behind the successful Shilpa Shetty fitness apps. I mean, she's, she's 45 and she's extremely fit. Uh, you know, Swamik was telling me that they've got uh, 4.5 million downloads of the app. Uh, the app is priced at 4.99 in India and 9.99 in, in in the rest of the world. They managed to get 50,000 daily active users. That's 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 a great great deal for something something that people are paying so much for. And uh, they have 500,000 monthly actives. And uh, keeping the app stable is uh, Somic Solanki. Welcome, Somic. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction, Anil. Yeah, my pleasure. Pl Great. Finally, there's Hi. Surya Mohanty, the CEO of Epicon, the streaming service from my friend Aditya Pitti and Anand Mandra's Intent Media Network. Uh, they've got some great content on that on that on that uh, platform, and I believe it's been doing very well ever since the pandemic started and ever since the opening up has also commenced. Welcome, Surya. Thank you. Thank you, Anil. Hi. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. I'm from Xero. We have the very charming X and UI design director at the company. Welcome, Nikki. Hello. Thank Hello, you. Hello, Nikki. For Are you? You? My pleasure. Then from Axido, uh, we have Nicholas Bjorkovation all the way from Sweden. Welcome, Nicholas. Thank you, Anil. Good to be here. Babi Sheikh Sood, Axido's product director and regional head South Asia. And for our other guests, Angus Kirkwood, who couldn't be here. Thanks to a personal emergency he had back in London. He was really apologetic about not being able to be here, but and I'm grateful that Abhishek has stepped into his shoes. 
uh, the very big shoes of uh, uh, of Angus Kirkwood. Welcome, Abhishek. Thanks, thanks, uh, Anil, and uh, great to be on the same podium with all the industry stalwarts. Thanks a lot. Thank you for being here. So let's begin by uh, you know we we be actually breaking this this up into three segments. One is on the UI front. Second is on innovation, and third is the architect. I'll begin with the UX side, uh, with you know, with 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 my colleagues from the industry. Uh, before that, I'd like to just ask each of the panelists who are there, uh, you know, how 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 is your how are your apps faring these days? Post the asking, uh, Alok. Alok, are you there? Alok. Am, am I audible? Yeah. Hello. Yeah, you, you, yeah, you you were not order those. How is the app faring uh, these it's, days? I mean, I, I think it's pretty good. I mean, you know, uh, uh, we we are seeing you know uh, pretty you know good uh, attractions, right? And uh, people are you know spending more time. You know, they're preferring to you know watch more content. So the average time you know of spending on the app is increasing. And uh, yes, I mean, compared to you know pre-COVID kind of a thing, is pretty good. Yeah. So are you back to? Uh, I mean, during the during the initial period of the COVID, it probably there must have been a big spike. Then post that, as the openings up have opening up have, have happened, are you back to uh, that that busy period, or have, has there been a slowdown? No, no, it's still it's still increasing, right? I mean, because we we have introduced new content as well, right? So it has you know like a more hunger to watch you know more content because they have now you know like a spare time, right? So uh, it's still increasing. So we are still in spike. Yeah. How's it doing with y'all? How's it going with you guys? So yes, I think after the launch, yes, we did penetrate through the crowd, which we wanted to, you know, uh, reach up to. So definitely, it's increasing because of the. I think it's the situation which is actually helping people, you know, getting online, which is actually helping us increase, you know, all the. So there are subscriptions which are increasing, the viewers which are increasing because of the situation. So yes, it is helping. Yeah. So I'd like to take a pause here before I go on to the next panelist. We've also got Chris from Singapore, from Axido on, on the panel with us, with me. Welcome, Chris. Oh, are you there? Sorry, yeah. I'm here. So she works closely with Nikki, and uh, hence Chris Tam is, is, is an experienced professional from the ecosystem as well. Welcome, Chris. Thank you for having me. Yeah. My pleasure and my apologies uh, for skipping uh, that that part. Uh, in terms of uh, so so you know, Dave, we were talking about have you managed to have you managed to you know build the community that you wanted to through uh, EOR TV or is it very we early days as yet? So yes, so we have just launched, so it is still under process. Hello? But yes, I think we are tapping into the crowd. We are we always wanted to, and uh, yes, it is helping, but. After the launch, we definitely need to uh, focus more on the community. So that's that is where we are looking forward to. Thank you for that, uh, Rohit. In terms of uh, uh, array, what are the challenges or what are the changes you have seen uh, during the pandemic and post the pandemic, as far as your app is concerned? Sure. So uh, to be very content wide enough, it's not merely focused on the apps. So we spread it on our website, our social media channels, which tend to be very popular. And then on things like Amazon Fire TV, right? So in terms of traction on the apps, I don't think we've seen a significant increase. It pretty much stays consistent. But because we've got a lot of users who are logging on, we're seeing a lot of traction happening over there. Because, but in terms of content consumption, yes, we have a lot more users coming in. Uh, at the same time, we are also dealing with the problem of you know, making sure that uh, lockdown in, in a very close setting, because you actually can't be out and shooting. So uh, that, that's another challenge that we're dealing with. What kind of content can you create uh, when you're restricted to, to a small studio or a closed space? But out across our platform, it helped us. Thank you for that. Uh, Shabuddin, uh, All Biology is really a messy app, and it's got its stories are very uh, uh, interesting to people in the heartlands. And uh, so, so how have you all uh, fed uh, through the pandemic and uh, beyond that from a technological perspective? Yeah, so during the initial stage of the pandemic, it was really a good surge in terms of the X, but as normally the it spiked, now it's like coming to a little on the lower side, but there's still a strength production. Yeah, we have some content which was already produced with us and it was post content. And in terms of uh, 
technical aspect uh, we have been used to work in you know a remote location so it isn't a coordinate and to have the same energy and the workflow and productivity going on so i think on work wise it's the same i would say yeah but in terms of did you face any challenges uh, any any outages or any uh, you know you know you had to probably because you you started serving your content to many other platforms not just on uh, your your content the all balaji content is going across many other platforms correct me if so with z5 we have a content deal but apart from that we are not serving on any other platform yet we have our own multi platforms like in terms of multiple screens yeah we, uh, we are on ios android tv and so that way we okay. are able to cater at all the platforms and we never had any outages so it's a, i think a well built platform where we are able to scale great so uh, thank you for that uh, as far as uh... uh you know you, uh, the ss uh, silpa shetty app is concerned so stabilized or is it is it still spiking you know compared to all the panels over here we are quite a bit young so we have just recently completed uh, a year in the month of may and uh, to be honest it has been a dream run for us so basically we started with ios and android app and then you know we have gone on to launch it on different platforms uh making sure that you know users don't miss out their workout on large scale televisions and devices basically uh then we have even uh, gone ahead and done integration with uh, the geo set top box uh, which has been one of our prime focus uh, of reaching out to the masses of so that is there and uh, since pandemic like you know we have uh, launched about uh, 17 programs so the kind of content which we have created uh, after the pandemic has our meditation so we have seen a lot of people uh, going through anxiety or you know uh, too much of work and that is why you know those 17 programs specifically targeted for mind led and meditation have been launched um, also we had this uh, international world yoga day international yoga day sorry uh, on 21st of june and we had a, another uh, seven programs released so that uh, uh, that is about 7% of the catalog which has been five months uh, we can say and we started with 17 programs and now we are about at about 65 programs so that has been the content uh, strategy and uh, after the initial like you know 20% or 30% growth uh, it wouldn't be as great as an ott uh, growth because it is finally into fitness and uh, a niche category i would say and not like you know uh, being followed by many people or you know they don't have uh, motivation and that is where we come into the picture we want to make sure that you know we uh, have this world class yoga application with diet nutrition and also functional exercises so yeah that has been uh, the story and in the last 4 uh, months we have seen uh, 50% growth uh, in the mau uh, with respect to the android tv or you know the large scale television uh, launched on geo setup box and xiaomi patch wall fantastic so any technology technological hurdles you all face which you had to overcome or any so, product uh, yeah we we do uh, we do uh, i wouldn't say that you know we don't uh, we do come across uh, hurdles and being into fitness and health uh, we have to be cutting edge and we have to always uh, calculate calories for example uh, while the user is uh, burning out that is where you know we need to be updated with uh, let's say like you know a series 6 launch uh, watch has been launched and we are already present on the ios so basically uh, that is the kind of uh, technology into and yeah that is the hurdle which we are facing ji all the time fantastic so uh, sorry uh you know you've been around for some time now i think it's about a year and a more than a year and a half couple of years for epicon how old is epicon now a year and prior to that i was at z5 so that was for almost two years yeah I, yeah for epicon it has been very it has very been good. extreme interesting uh, journey and uh, you know the the numbers uh, during the covid that that we had and we had seen some 3x to 4x surge Uh, that obviously came down for some time, but again, uh, the kind of V graph that we are seeing right now, uh, with our consumption pattern going up, is primarily due to the the multi screen that we are present in multiple smart TVs and the devices that most of my fellow panelists spoke. Apart from that, we have also done quite a number of optimization at the back end, where we have worked three seconds. That took a lot of effort from our engineering team to sort of optimize that. 
and then ensure that there is a low latency when the video is being played. Plus, we are one of the first apps on the Android TV and across the whole smart TV ecosystem where we have podcast and as well as video. So that's the innovation that we have done where the best of the two worlds you will have uh, while uh, you know opening the TV, you will have both the sides of the world. So if you don't, if you have a huge amount of fatigue of watching a video, you can just switch over to podcast and then listen to some of the greatest podcasts and storytelling across uh, across the genres. So we have done these kind of innovations on the content front, on the tech front, uh, and as well as we have also understood the user needs and how, at what point in time, what kind of content would also go. So we are working very closely uh, and doing a lot of customer listening across uh, across the cities, across uh, the cohorts of millennials, uh, age group, what kind of content and what kind of uh, technical changes, uh, I would say, from the back end and the, from, from the front end. Uh, that we need to do time to time. I think this kind of, uh, you know, minor improvements or I would say constant improvement on the platform has helped us to sort of hit our DAU at around 3x to 4x, you know, what we are previously during the COVID also. So we have to see that. And we have a very long uh, content roadmap also, which is very clear for the next one and a half years. So we are go yeah, we are going to follow that and then see how things happen. Yeah, so now I'll, you know, move on to, uh, you know, to Rohit, Rohit, UX strategy, do you think one should adapt to be relevant in the market while creating differentiation through UX? I'd like some insights from you on that. Sure. So uh, I think a lot of us, there are really two parts to this, right? Um, I think over the past couple of years, uh, internet access has really increased and become easy for a lot of people. So you've got people who come in from, say, the lowest end devices to very fancy uh, phones or laptops who access the internet. Now, all these people are essentially consumers. And uh, there's, the market is also very crowded, which means when you've got a combination of easy access and a lot of applications, people have very little patience, right? So all it's going to take is one bad experience for people to take off from your website and perhaps switch to a competitor. Now, uh, that's, that's the first part. Traditionally, I think when people have thought about UI, I'm not sure if everybody approached UI from a... Uh, so from a human interaction perspective, right? It, it probably works this way that, you know, I, I go and say I'd like an interface that is minimalist or that conforms to certain ideas of what I think looks great. And then the UX guy builds that for me. Now, although that interface might tick all the boxes of what makes a great a UI or a UX, it's not necessarily geared towards understanding the journey a user takes into the website, right? Now, having said that, I think a lot of us here already have existing products, right? So if you were to start from scratch, sure, the exercise of trying to understand who your target audience is, website, right? And what are the potential paths they could take is a good way to figure out how you want to start building your app. But for people like us who already have products, I think it makes sense to start benchmarking in that in the current state of your app, uh, can you map a user journey? So when a user comes into your app, do they take? right are there points or are there certain sections of your website or app that are never explored and uh, so are they blind spots that's number one uh secondly a lot of us tend to focus on the core offering which we should right so for example if i have a site my is going to be on making sure there is no lag but what about the experience right the, does he if he runs into trouble is the help accessible uh is it recommendations that keeps him on the website for a uh, for a longer period of time uh, that that's something to think about. So I think mapping your app is most important. I think is uh, users today, right, uh, are not going to stop, uh, or rather not going to be, uh, you know, um, accepting your app if there's a problem. They're going to be very quick to tell you that there's a problem and they don't like it. So please take user feedback very seriously, right? I, even if you can't uh, please everybody, I think people at least expect an acknowledgement saying that, sure, you know, we know we have a problem, we are working towards it, and here's what we're going to do. So I think these three things put together will uh, uh, is. Thanks for that. Now I'll, I'll, you know, I'm going to ask the same question to uh, Shabuddin. Do you think you should adapt to be relevant in the market by experience? Platform, there is very few minutes, I would say, where he's trying to sample the content. And especially, I would talk about Old Balaji. Uh, the strategy we follow is a totally a SWOT platform. So no, normally first episodes of a show, at that point, we don't have any intervention or anything that comes between the user's first watching experience so that he can sample the content and have a first hand feel of it. Post that, the next content we try to you know, prompt him to subscribe. While I would like to totally align with Rohit customers and their feedback, 
At the same point of time, when you are designing the UI of empathy, we need to genuinely understand what a user wants. Because there is nowadays, I would like, I think most of us who align with me, there's a clutter, clutter in OTT space. I think we are like 30 or 40 of us in the OTT segment. And there are a lot of content which is around us. What user is looking for a personalized or hyper personalization where he can look for a content piece which is like a program for him and can consume it in the most uh, easiest way. Ease of use, I would say. Okay. Go on. I mean, so that's, that's it. Yeah. So that's where like it's a user experience which you build around a user precisely present him the content which use parameters. We capture a lot of data of users, behavior and events that he does around your app while interacting with it. Pipeline for your recommendation engine, you know, millions of age group, 30 or 20, what they're looking for, what region they are in, what day and time of the day they are trying to browse or access your content. And accordingly, your content can be personalized and programmed for them. Okay. So, so in terms of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, what drives uh, consumer uh, engagement as well as the UX, is concerned. What drives customer engagement? Is it uh, uh, from prompts? What drives uh, user engagement? User engage drive user because we are a SWOT platform. Post that it has he has to feel worth of his money. What content is being served? Subscribe to a platform. It's a trust factor, and we need to give value to his money and accordingly serve the content which is aligned to his uh, usage. When he was looking for through which medium he subscribed. For example, if somebody was looking for a comedy content, and through that campaign he subscribed to my app. We have to uh, program content in that way through a recommendation engine that most of the relevant and is served in the best of the possible uh, environment where it's uh, the uh, buffer free, you know, feel is given to him and he can easily watch the content. So, uh, you know, have you had to make changes in your own, uh, in the way you've uh, built your app to improve the user experience? Uh, and I'm ask, going to ask this question to others, but beginning with Rohit sure. after this. Sure. So initially, yes, we did some changes in terms of how we personalize our content, how we have enriched a lot of our metadata basis of, you know, uh, like in terms of uh, what kind of a genre it is and the key moments of the videos. And based of it, we are able to like pick up your user is looking for a contract like identify, oh, he's looking for a stand, he's a age group of 25 to 30 and looking for a stand up comedy. And according to that, we are trying to program content for him. That's one side to it. On the second side, I would like to add is uh, uh, in terms of COVID, especially we did a little bit of change in our uh, app because we wanted to bring down the uh, bandwidth consumption because it's uh, totally on, you know, ABR, so alternative bit rate where, you know, basis of the connectivity and the speed available, the video quality, you know, yeah, the, it's adjusted itself. And there was, a, uh, I think, a, it was input from the, I think, GOI that way we need to stick the consumption. And that is where we scale down our videos to SD instead of HD. Okay, so that's the change. But in terms of the, uh, in terms of navigation, going through the, did I make any changes there or that, that you all didn't do? No, initial, when the, it's an initial engagement, there's nothing that comes between the first user experience of watching a content. There are no pop-ups, user can sample, there is no, Nothing coming between users watching experience. And okay, that's the standard uh, Rohit, we have as a well. Okay, Rohit, from your perspective? So we are still in the process of doing what I mentioned earlier, right? Our, uh, our objective is twofold. One is to make sure that we can figure out users to leave our website today. So we are in the process of heat mapping the site, figuring out uh, which areas people tend to take off from, right? They come into the website, consume something, and they're gone, right? Uh, uh, in this sense, uh, we've you know made a few changes. They're just incremental changes, nothing big. Uh, simple things like sign up, right? It would seem very obvious that for most websites, you give people the option of you know signing up with their Facebook or Google account. Now we didn't have that for a long time, and uh, even signing up with a custom account was a two-step process. So having a single sign-up screen for potential users uh, did have a big change in the way sign up is needed to, right? Simple changes like this. Uh, second thing is how content is shown on the web page. So if, for instance, I have a video that uh, a user is watching, uh, having a single line of related content under that works a lot better than having like an infinite scroll layout, which people are never going to bother scrolling to. So we are trying to make these changes step by step. And uh, I think some of them are working in our favor. The others uh, need a little more thought. Because I think uh, the other part with UI changes is you can never shock the user into 
a completely new experience. They get used to working with your platform a particular way. And if they see something completely new, I think you risk uh, losing users who are used to that interface. Thanks for that. Now I'm going to ask uh, Alok this. Alok, in terms of the uh, UX and the user experience, have you had to uh, make some modifications? Have you had to make changes as, you, as your audiences have scaled up? Yes, we did. Uh, like uh, uh, we did, a, you know, a lot of homework and all, and we we actually come up with a prototype that we're going to, you know, like we're going to develop it very soon. Uh, even we disclosed this whole design in our last uh, you know, uh, event. Right? Event. Right. Um, so I'll start with you know, like so with, uh, with a uh, you know a misconception that you know uh, usually it happens that design is you know uh, is is not making a product pretty. Right, uh, uh, you know, the layout, thumbnails, you know, all these classic elements of visual designs. These are these actually plays an important role uh, in the overall impact of the experience. But uh, 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 but it's, it's just uh, you know one component of a well-designed product. The main thing is you know is getting you know inspired from the people, right? I mean, from the real people. So uh, uh, you know a design uh, approach, right, which uh, you know takes inspiration from the real people in target group and also works within the technological constraint that we have with the platform and you know it cons and and that approach which considers you know every product touch points is opportunity to you know you know uh, delight the customer so uh, so you should follow the user and everything everything rest will fall in right so instead of you know instead of you know like a uh, it's all about you know like a uh, reduce the barrier for the user right so uh, instead of asking element does right the Correct questions, you know, the user wants this element to do, right? If we can invite that, you know, uh, that that uh, you know, it creates a great product which actually, you know, helps a user. Okay. she's actually been the UX and uh, expert in in terms of. So, so could you share some best practices? And you know, uh, you're 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 down in Sydney, you said, right, Nikki? I am. Yes. How's the weather out down there now? What time is it? It is. It's hot. It's 5 p.m., but it's still very nice outside. Fantastic. Is it time for a beer? Summer. <laughs> it is almost time for a beer. You're right. Fantastic. So let's let's you know get some bubbly and have fun. Uh, you know, do you have something to show us? Uh, if you could share that with us and you know talk about it, it'll be great. Some of the best practices that you know Exido has yeah. put in place makes us concerned. Love to have you share that. Absolutely. Are you guys able to see that? Yes, we are able to see it. Thank you. Cool. So um, thank you guys so much for answering some of those questions. I think it's uh, uh, it's super obvious that understanding our audiences and their behaviours directly impacts the way that they use our products, the way that uh, we need to invest time and money and, and the things that we need to do to change those products, right? Um, but I think the question often is how how do we truly understand our audiences? How can we get to that point where we know our users and we know what their drivers are and we understand the reason that they do things on our product? Um, there's a difference between, I guess, for myself, looking at analytics and seeing what people do and then understanding why why they do it and what their drivers are and the reasons are that they're, they're, they're doing these things on our product. So that's what I want to talk a little bit about today. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of a case study um, of a client that I worked with in, in Australia. Um, they give you guys some insight of what we're doing in this side of the world and, and probably uh, hopefully you can take it into consideration for your regions as well. Um, uh, I might just jump in. So the case study client from Australia, uh, our client was SBS On Demand. They are a free uh, ad funded streaming service that house TV shows, movies and events. And SBS itself also produces free-to-air uh, broadcast channels. So uh, you may be familiar with them. Um, they are a very, very large uh, name in Australia. So what we really wanted to do with them, um, we needed to decide whether we should include their five broadcast channels on their on-demand platform. So SBS On Demand has all of their catch-up, um, or a traditional OTT service, and they were basically making a decision around whether or not they wanted to have the live channels um, inside their OTT app or not. Uh, and I think that's a really common kind of um, problem that people are finding. It's a, it's a new feature and an addition of such a feature that they don't have right now. Um, and, and we needed to decide by doing that, what would that change for the users and also for the business? Um, for the users, we needed to know 
why they would actually watch that that digital linear channel on the OTT service um, instead of just watching their television or instead of just watching VOD catch up. Why would they really watch these channels? And for the business, we wanted to know if adding this feature would cannibalize other viewing. Would we be taking people away from traditional free to air where the ad revenue is higher? Um, would we be taking people away from watching VOD content where, again, the revenue is higher? Um, what is the actual benefit of adding these channels? Should we even do it at all? So these are some really common challenges that we face when building products. Um, and the way that we approached that from a, a UX perspective was a really wide reaching study. So we, we consider research to be a very, very important part of understanding our audiences and understanding our users' behaviours. And for this, for this particular feature, um, it was a really big decision for SBS to make. So we had to really dig, dig ourselves into a lot of different, different positions here. So we used uh, an exploratory research method um, more so than the explanatory, which we would generally say um, is for something that already exists. So we, we needed to find out something new something that we couldn't test that existed already. So to do that, we, we first of all, we ran some competitor analysis, um, which I'm sure you guys are all super familiar with, very, very common um, way of finding out information about how other people do, do things and how other people are solving your problem. Um, and, and we also ran some stakeholder interviews to find out what um, the people that we were talking to, what they wanted, what the business wanted. And then we did some user testing um, on some existing products. So this is where we start to get into the really deep kind of side of the insights. We ask people to use different products and record how they use them to get a good understanding of what their behaviours are. And now we did this with SBS's competitors. So we had a look at some of the competitor market, the competitor products that were on the market and how users were actually interacting with the feature that already existed on those products to see if we could learn something from them. Can we do this better? Um, and the biggest part of this study, which we did, was a diary study or a, a contextual inquiry. You might have heard of it before. Um, and basically what that, what that means is uh, we collect uh, habitual information about people and how they're using their video services day, day to day in their day to day life. So this is a long, longer term study where we add a diary entry every time they watch video. And that entry includes a bunch of different um, items or elements so they they talk about how many channels they watched um, what they watched and why they watched it with um, and if they had a good experience or people to record this really large amount of data we can get a really deep understanding of how our users are interacting with us um, and, and this is over a period of a week or two weeks long so we can really be certain that we have a good understanding and it's not just a one-off day for them uh, we used uh, an online tool to do this and and that was called recollective which also allowed us to have kind of an online forum with our participants and we could uh, have discussion boards, we could set them other daily activities and uh, things like ask them to do card sorting or review some wireframes that we were working on. So we had a really good community of participants uh, for this study where we were re interacting with them on a day-to-day -day basis. We, uh, this is just an example of what one of the diary entries looked like. So we had over 90 of these actually. So 90 diary entries um, and close to 500 additional events, discussions on boards, completing activities. Uh, and the, our age range was between 18 and 70. So this was a really, really great study for us, a good understanding of the broad uh, breadth of the, the users that we had in this cohort did one-to-one -one interviews with all of the participants. So uh, this was an, a chance for us to deep dive to face-to-face -face and gather some more deeper insights into things. Um, we, we studied each participant and their behaviours before we went into these interviews and we personalised each interview based on what we knew about them and what they did during. So keep in mind, this was all also during the height of lockdown. COVID uh, had just hit us in, in Australia and New Zealand. Uh, so we were conducting all of this remotely. <laughs> but also has great benefits now that we've done it and we can see how this can work for us on a global scale as well. So through a combination of all these research methods, um, testing, diary study, interviews, we have large learnings. And that was made up of 68 
unique detailed insights and recommendations for this customer. So this is just a huge product roadmap for them. This formulates about six to 12 months of product perspective, which is all backed by user insights and by our user data. We, in order to do that, to develop all of these insights, we analyzed all of the data that we collected and we used lots of different pieces of evidence to, to form each of those insights. So we combined uh, a lot of different insights and data, things like you know the, the chart you can see on the left, we counted how many channels people were watching in a regular basis. We uh, asked them specific information about how they, how they liked to select a channel to watch. Um, and we asked them to give us some suggestions around um, what they thought a good feature might be. So we, we collated all of these different types of research and we, come, we came up with these kind of recommendations and these insights which were specific to the product and they were backed by users. So you can see here um, that it's not only feature roadmaps, but also we were able to influence the UX KPIs through analytics as well. So we made some suggestions around, for example, track how many users are, are referring to VOD from the linear channels. So in order for us to make sure this is successful, we need to ensure that people are actually going to VOD from linear channel as well. So imagine this times 68. So that's how that's how many kind of insights we developed for this one product, this one feature, just using this process of research. Um, and these are obviously unique to this audience and demographic, but I wanted to share the type of outcomes that were formed with this practice. And you can start to imagine how conducting your own research in your own region with your own audiences can develop these types of product roadmap uh, decisions. And just to finish off, I wanted to give you guys some quick insights into what we actually found out, some big learnings from doing this research, what we think this might impact for the market. Um, I think this is quite relevant for the Australian market, particularly for broadcasters, but I think it's still, you know, there's things that you guys can still take from it as well as OTT services. Um, we learned that people are still watching linear TV. We are not just looking at a VOD future. Um, linear TV answers just answers drivers and answers unique user needs that linear that that VOD just doesn't. Um, for example, reducing that decision making time. So we all know when we get stuck into that kind of Netflix black hole where we're scrolling forever and we can't find anything to choose that we want to watch and that linear channels, they really solve that driver for people and humans. Um, and, and we decided to take this as a learning because we think that there are things that we can do in our OTT services that can, can kind of play on this and we can combine linear TV offers and what video on demand offers. And we see this as well because we do believe that linear has the potential to grow the VOD market. Um, we think that the linear channels, they help to introduce new users into content. Or maybe they're on a channel and they just happen to watch the next episode and they like it. Um, and from our study, we also noted that people were much more likely to binge watch something that they'd seen the first episode of on linear. Um, they would just, if there was a quick and easy way to get from that linear channel into the VOD, they would watch the whole season. Um, and, and that was a really common pattern that we were seeing develop. So people are, are saying that linear TV helps them to discover things that they like. And what that actually means for us then, we, we do expect to see a bit more of a shift towards flexible linear TV. And this could include some things like uh, maybe virtual channels um, with unique themes. So think about, you know, stitching your VOD content together to create your own linear to people uh, who are just looking to jump into content that they like. We found that there was a really big uh, uh, interest in things like personalized linear channels. So imagine that there's just a channel that is just for you with all movies that we think you're going to like, and you can jump into it anytime and watch those. Um, there was a really big push towards these things and, and also doing flexible um, behaviors with the linear channels as well. Things like um, start an episode from the beginning or find more episodes on board, really combining these two experiences to get the best of both for the for those users. Um, so personally, I, I can see a huge opportunity in, in using these new types of remote research methods, which I spoke about. Um, I think this is the best way to form human-centered product roadmaps. And using these tools, we're not just limited to our geographic location either. We have a really wide reach for audiences across all regions. And that's a, typically been a really tough challenge for, for people who are trying to reach their audiences. They're not necessarily there with them face-to-face. 
um, and, and understanding how these methods can develop insights and and then change your products is is really the heart of, of what human centered design is. So uh, I would love to keep talking forever, but if you guys do have other questions, um, of course, I'm always around to, to chat. Last question from, from what she's just showed you all. It's great to have your last questions because linear virtual channels is an interesting proposition going forward. My perspective is that Netflix is going to go linear at some stage going forward. They'll go the entire, uh, you know, the way the broadcasters are today, I expect Netflix at some stage growth will stagnate and they will mm -hmm. go linear. I yeah, I agree. Anything. And I mean, yeah, we, we've seen such and truly it's the it's the needs and the behaviors of those people that uh, VOD doesn't always answer. It's like when you have news, you have live events, you have programs that people are watching that are progressively released that VOD, the VOD experiences just cannot answer that in the same way that linear does. So they're different drivers and I think they always will be. Yep. Any, any questions from you guys? Alok, Rohit, Swamik, Abhishek, Abhishek, not Abhishek, because uh, Surya, Dave, you'll, you'll buy into the argument that she's put forth, that you've got to use a lot of research to <laughs> define the user experience. You've got to really, in India, Jugaad, we believe in Jugaad. Am I right? I'd like kind of research projects like this. Silence means no. Oh, yes. <laughs> Interesting. So much no, opportunity. The user experience which we do is only based on feedbacks and what we, you know, get to know from the market rather than doing it so organically rich, which you guys are doing. Yeah. Alok? You like that idea? Yeah, it's, it's, it's mostly, you know, based on the user feedback, right? So. Uh, like we do, you know, regular, you know, uh, sessions, you know, in-person sessions with the, you know, uh, uh, users to understand, you know, what they want and, you know, how they use it, right? And usually, you know, don't, we don't ask us to understand that, you know, uh, what we have to do with the product. So it's more about, you know, it's not about that what product. we like, probably. Yeah. It's what they like, yeah. I understand. Anyone else? But it's entirely I mean, based on user feedback, yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's totally user-driven feedback. So uh, having a good base of user and then a lot of feedback for it. Mm. So it's mostly that database we look at, you know, what users are expecting or what they expected from the platform or the service. And basis of that, you know, we try to improve. And that's where we implement changes in the platform. Sorry, no research from your side? Or you uh, do I research? think uh, uh, obviously there's no empirical formula to this, but then I was listening to Nikki. Yeah, it's. I think uh, both linear and VOD uh, coexist. So it's it's like it's like the the imagination of the audience or the imagination of the customer at that point in time, which is very spontaneous, that what they want to watch. So I think uh, choices uh, given out to the customer is going to spell out the success. So what kind of choices you want to give, whether to a satellite linear feed or a virtual linear feed or a VOD. So I think it's good to have all the choices given to the customer and then, then the customer decides. Yes, we see varied consumption patterns across geographies, across various platforms of, 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 uh, of our Epicon. But yes, uh, it's good to have all the three formats coexist. I think I think that's that, that that's the research till now that, that spells out uh, as of now. So because you'll have a live you'll have a you'll have a delayed live feed and you'll have you'll have a broadcast yeah. feed, but all the other players like RA doesn't have it, Hoi Choi doesn't have it, neither does uh, uh, Shilpa Shetty's app have it, nor does all Balaji have a live feed, if I'm correct. So people what, what do most people do? Are virtual channels a way to go for you Yeah, I think yeah. people like a so Are virtual channels to like excite you yeah, so uh, taking on to that uh, point from Nikki, yeah. uh, so linear, yeah. Yeah, linear yeah, are you able to hear me? Were you speaking or who was speaking? Was... So, yeah, I was speaking. Yeah, so uh, taking uh, forward the point uh, from yes, Nikki, we can hear you. Uh, so we are in, yeah, we Please are continue. in the fitness. Yeah, are you able to hear me or is there a lag? Uh, I think Shomik, you can continue. Yeah. There seems to be a lag, but we can hear you. Lag. Yeah. Understood. Understood. So in health and fitness, you can there, hear are, you. there are different dimensions, and uh, basically everybody is at a, a different fitness level. 
and uh, let's say like you know user a starts uh, the workout today and uh, he is supposed to go to uh, day 2 so the user cannot skip uh, the day 2 and uh, there might be some user who is starting uh, the workout today so like you know one user is at day 2 and the other user is at day 1 so at times uh, linear uh, streaming doesn't uh, work for health and fitness until or unless it is like you know some information about health uh, nutrition in just uh, over the couch and not actually like you know be on the yoga mat and uh, try working out so linear streaming uh, we had considered and we had done a bit of research even uh, before launching the application so we had uh, spoken to like you know the uh, people who were visiting gyms and uh, physical fitness centers you know what was their experience and you know how can we match that to a digital platform Uh, so that was the challenge which we were uh, 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 facing and then you know that is how you know the app was created that to match the best of both the worlds physical as well as digital and to ensure that you know the user uh, uh, completes their fitness journeys rather than you know leaving in between uh, which is uh, like you know the uh, like you know, only 2 or uh, 3 percent people actually complete uh, programs and not uh, complete i mean rest of them just give up in between did you interview those people your your users in their gyms sorry did, did you, you interview, interview those people in the gyms yes correct yeah so that oh. was uh, the input which we wanted to have uh, yeah so like you know what uh, motivates them to go to gym and you know what demotivates them to uh, work out at home so those were the kind of questions uh, which we had asked uh, to the users and that is how you know we had built the case studies uh, case study to basically uh, understand what will the user do basically differently at home and not at the gym amazing great i mean uh, thanks for that nikki I th- if there's any other questions you want to ask otherwise we move on to the next section of this uh, uh, virtual round table uh, any questions or are you all are you all happy with the uh, explanations given by nikki and the insights that she has shared or any insights you'd like to share on from from your own experiences like uh, somik just shared are we done with that great so now to this thank next section thank you nikki for that it was a wonderful insight that you shared with us thank you very much i'll move on to the next That's session now chat. yeah great so uh, you know the next section of our webinar is uh, about innovation in terms of how do you freshen uh, you know the, the 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 product which is there available to your audiences how do you layer new innov- innovations onto, onto them for instance for india you know we have uh, the live streams which she was talking about but amazon in the us has started streaming live channels uh you know it's common for us in india but not over there so how do we have a how do we have an entire platform ready so that we can keep adding innovations to them and what innovations work uh and then and you know i'll, I'll turn around and ask alok this question how do you see innovative services features helping ott com- uh, companies with customer acquisition and retention uh, alok yeah so uh, i mean obviously the innovation is you know is which you know should drive the brand right and and specifically with otts you know uh, when uh, you know a uh, uh, creative con- so uh, you know to stay innovative you know we you know we need to stay get inspired with you know by the people by the user other brands and you know all the current happenings you know uh, uh, in terms of you know product uh, uh, offerings and all so uh, uh, so is innovation is one of the you know the key part right and we always try to innovate you know in terms of you know say product or the behind the scene kind of first stuff uh, you know the way we deliver the content the way we encode the content the way we engage people how we are going to you know track their you know uh, behaviors and uh, what exactly they do when they are actually playing the content you know uh, is uh, you know uh, whether we can add something on the player side or not so uh, so yes i mean you know uh, uh, you know the innovation is something that you know which shapes the product and obviously you know it uh, it you know uh, uh, strength you know it strengthens the relationship with the uh, you know user uh, you know that we have and being a uh, subscription is what you know uh, platform is is pretty important to you know engage those people because um i mean uh, for us that that user particular user is already paid and they have already converted now it's up to us to you know uh, meet uh, you know uh, meet their expectations and stick to the commitment 
Yeah, one innovation that uh, you know, stands out that is really a standard that you'll have done in recent times, which you think it's not available so, uh, elsewhere. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, we uh, we did you know a uh, uh, couple of things you know in and during this whole uh, uh, lockdown period. So we introduced uh, uh, the parental control, right, and uh, 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 so that you know, uh, uh, this whole experience is going to the drawing rooms and all, right. So uh, family wants to watch this content and we seen that, you know, all the family members, you know, uh, are actually, you know, like uh, having different, different content for uh, in the same platform. So that is one thing that, uh, you know, we introduced and uh, kind of innovation that we are actually doing right now with the encodings, right? So, you know, like a uh, uh, with seamless delivery of the videos with, you know, uh, uh, low latency kind of a thing and uh, allowing people to, you know, like uh, having a um, say you know 5.1 audio on the big screen and you know uh, studio on the mobile uh... great uh rohit any innovation you guys have done which which, which is stand out so, you know very limited experience in this area but i'll tell you something that we've uh, tried and experimented with right so we ran a web series a while back and it was made up of a cast of characters almost like a reality show and we tried using a JavaScript overlay. Essentially, uh, as the users watching the uh, episodes, you can click on a specific user and it gives you a pop-up, right? So that will give you information about uh, that individual, say, social media channels, his biography, uh, photographs, and you can build it the way you want, right? So we tried this for a while, but I think the takeaway from the experiment was that uh, this is a good to have, right? Because it's, it's a minor annoyance that's always on the screen. And uh, the novelty factor that in uh, you know programming, which is say something like sports, uh, you know people might find that more appealing, where they probably click on that and get stats about the match or the players and sports. But uh, this is something that we've taken it off because we just didn't see that much of traction. But that that's pretty much the only new thing we've tried, apart from striving to make the platform as fast as we can. So innovation for innovation's sake, innovation's sake doesn't work really. It has to be a, a utility thing. That's the lesson you take home for it from it, right? Yes. Fantastic. So Shabadun and uh, sorry, any anything or Dave, yeah. drop some. Uh, uh, I would like to add here, Anil. So yeah. basically, in terms of uh, content, so content is nothing like I would like in my understanding. It's like a storytelling. How well can you tell a story? And what yeah. we have done is like the uh, library or the genre of content we have. We are trying to enrich the metadata. It's a mix of both the worlds in terms and manual interventions where we can have more enriched metadata in terms of the character, the keyframes and the emotions which can be tagged and which is fed into the system while the user is watching or viewing a content. It can link back to his experiences and accordingly help to plan or program the content for him. Side, we are working on certain changes in terms of user experience like adding markers wherein you know you can identify the content genres and again map back to a user persona. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so for us, I think uh, we are definitely catering to the very sensitive, uh, you know, part of the society. So I think yeah. innovation for us, like obviously, we we'll, we need to be very subtle and sometimes radical innovations are like disasters. So innovate on the design front as well as well as on the technology but we are definitely looking looking forward to the geographies where to the uh, to the concept of lgbtq community and the content you know so innovation on the part of or part of that on the content as well as the approach which we are doing right now okay sorry yeah i think it's over over a couple of months now so one is of course the multi-format content that we introduced with the ebooks, uh, podcast, video, and games on the single platform. So that has sort of taken a good surge in terms of the mobile engagement. And then the second part of the innovation is of course the smart TV innovation that that we have done. And when we know that you know the the cinema to home is going to be the future for next one year, uh, we 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 put our head. We did a lot of exchanges where we thought that you know how do we make a good experience for the user whether on a smart tv and mobile to sort of watch we put a lot of thought around that the innovation is still on and we have done quite a number of uh, changes on, on our platforms to to see how giving us feedback and we have seen the initial feedback has been really good on the smart tvs and and it and it sort of inspires us and motivates us to introduce few bunch of more 
Great, thanks. Yeah, Swamik? Yeah, so in one and a half year, done uh, quite a, a bit of uh, innovations, you can say, and tweaks uh, to the product. Because, you know, most of the time is spent uh, of the users. So, you know, uh, again, like, you know, taking two users, like, you know, user A and user B, they might be at different fitness levels. Now, unlike uh, award service or, you know, unlike the OTT service, uh, we have to take pauses between exercises because after 10 counts, 20 counts, the user will need to take a break. Now, these two users, A and B, are at different levels uh, of fitness. So obviously, uh, a user who is uh, at a fitter level will require only 30 seconds of pause in between. But uh, the user B, who has just recently started, may want to have one minute break. So, you know, there is, uh, whenever there is rest screen, which is coming, tap on it anywhere on the screen. And so that was, uh, you know, one of the small tweaks which we did. Also then, you know, there are other categories of users who don't want to actually watch the entire video. They uh, are like, you know, a little uh, at the intermediate level or, you know, expert level, and they just want to know what exercises need to be done. So for them, uh, instead of getting into the video, we have a complete program uh, listed that, you know, you need to do uh, uh, exercise A and, you know, 10 reps, and then you need to move on to exercise B uh, with uh, 20 reps, whatever, like, you know, so that is the kind of, uh, you know, that also caters to a different category of users. Then what we saw was that uh, on search bar, uh, people were not aware about uh, Yogasana names. So that is a common problem which we have seen that, you know, you wouldn't know a Vajrasana, but you would know that, you know, you want to do something for your back pain or, you know, something for uh, whatever ailment or, you know, whatever goal you have in mind. So back pain rather than, you know, a Vajrasana or, you know, some other asana which they wouldn't know so then you know what we did was you know as shabuddin also uh, said we started enriching the middle so being considered and that is how you know now you can search for and you will get individual exercises individual yoga sunas, and also programs related to that particular keyword so the other innovation which we have done is on the marketing front and uh, that is basically after observable thought that simple soulful was uh, an application only for women so we wanted to change uh, that perspective and uh, so that uh, for each of the programs which were like you know a daily yoga now a daily yoga program is for men and women both uh, and anybody can do basically so we started uh, uh, with the digital ads uh, by uh, like you know personalizing uh, to uh, females separately and also like you know the gender uh, sorry the age group uh, which they belong to so that is the kind of innovation which we have uh, like you know uh, we are supposed to do going on to different platforms and you know making sure that the user is uh, can watch because the user might be in an awkward uh, yoga sana pose and you know the user might want to control the video playback from there which we are doing right now and the future they are uh, and you know posture uh, recognition so uh, since we are a digital instructor right now in the user's life so we want to make sure that you know when the user is uh, uh, doing any particular yoga asana or you know any particular exercise the count uh, and also the posture should be correct uh, for we need to make sure that the user is completing the workout in a correct way so that is the kind of uh, now, how do you use augmented user? reality for that how do you use augmented reality for that so, I mean, uh, so there are uh, like you know uh, engines available uh, in the market uh, which uh, utilize the camera of the user uh, of desktop or you know mobile also and also like you know we are 60 degree uh, camera view so for example if uh, shilpa is doing or an exercise and you want to from all the angles then basically those 360 degree uh, videos and you know the Posture recognition will come to the play. Thanks for that. Any of you all have you normal know, hands up? What about ER? Are you guys? Anyone speak up? Is it so LGBT? It's interesting. Continue, sorry. I think Somik also mentioned. I think AI backed with AI is definitely going to drive uh, the innovations and the engagement. The more the immersive the content is, the better is the time spent. So I I think uh, also taking you know a dive into the ar piece and then trying they can convert it to ar i think uh, in next six to seven you know, ar based content that are, that are going to come into the market and then you know this is the future and the millennials especially are 
sort of looking forward to this kind of content and uh, it's 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 very interesting to see how we can adapt AR and then you know convert or get some of the new content or create some of the new content that can you know keep us ahead of the curve and game. I think that's. So how do we see AR coming into play on uh, entertainment?